Hello there, it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. Now, yesterday's video was an art quilt and I wanted just to do um, a landscape for you so that, you know, you could see how I did it and, um, yeah, you can see how easy and dramatic it is because I think it's really dramatic. Um, it's like I've got a new toy. Okay, today what I want to do is I want to show you how to... Um, maybe make it a bit more picturesque. Now I have done painting on this show before onto fabric and um, I must admit I have got a painted one as well but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to sew a sunflower onto this pre-made quilt. So. Now, we, this quilt has lots of different fabrics, so we do have to consider that. Um, some of them is silky satin lining, so which is ever so thin, this pale blue here, and um, that can be tricky. It has a life of its own, and um, that's the only problem with it. It literally, you blink and it's it's left the building. It hasn't moved an inch. It's 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 gone next door for a cup of tea, you know. So that's quite difficult. Obviously the mountain here is quite thick fabric. This is a very thick coating fabric. Um, okay, it stays where you put it, but you do have to consider your stitch length so that you can, um, you can, you can sew over it. And the, probably the one that's going to cause me the most problems is this one at the bottom. This is a beautiful stretch Raylon, Draylon, artificial fabric. Uh, I love it and I think it really goes well with the quilt but I do have to watch that what I don't do is I pick up a bit and I, I pull it all the way along. So you know we've got lots of different fabrics to consider. What I'm doing here is I'm rough cutting yellow petals and I have already pre-cut a brown circle. Now I know it's only a sunflower but it's um yeah there's probably a lot to consider here so let me just get all my petals out of the way and they are cut three hand there was no pencil lines or anything there and um hopefully they're all cut through now that fabric eight layers thick and i've probably cut five lots so you know, don't think that I'm cheating here by only giving my sunflower a wilting look. Now, ideally, <clears throat> if you were going to uh, put in a stalk or you were going to put in um, a couple of leaves, then we would do that before. So I can just grab some green cloth. Now again, you know, we've got stuff to consider. This is taffeta. I kind of like taffeta. If you ask me to pick a favourite, then I'd say taffeta. So, all I'm going to do now is cut a stalk and a couple, two leaves, two leaves. So, and they do have this... small aren't they so and then they will literally just poke through from behind the circle okay I've got one leaf oh let's go with like that that's grand okay yes and we all know we have favorite things don't we uh, <laughs> obviously cutting out is not one of mine so I've got my circle on my sewing machine and I've got my sewing machine set up as a zigzag and I am got my leaves there and I'm going to grab ideally four petals so let's turn the sewing machine to a straight stitch and this I suppose is as close to cheating as we're going to get what I'm going to do is sew it all together first. Now the reason I'm doing that is just to make life a tad easier for me 
and as it's an art quilt it's literally we can do our own thing now there are rules you know you can't yeah it's still got to be tidy I always make mine so that they can be washed um, yeah but, you know so there are rules but I don't know what they are okay so basically what I'm doing is I'm sort of fanning out the petals but I'm not, rather than worry I've gone for lots and they're all slightly different heights although because I folded over the fabric they are mainly the same height and then what I'm doing is I'm laying them in my path I can pick up the foot of the circle and then I can lay them down and obviously I do need to consider leaves so let's put a little bit of green there that hopefully will just sort of flash through now because everything's quite see-through I can see the brown underneath so that's great so now that I've got a leaf in the way what I have to do when I pick up these petals is um, sort of slide it under the leaf and believe me it actually makes life a little bit easier for you because it's like securing it so, yep, bop, bop, bop. and there we go that one's not cut so I'm going to keep them together And I want the stalk behind the petals, so so in fact what I want is the stalk up above. Now it doesn't need to be even the correct colours, although obviously I am going for the correct colours. And you can see that I'm I'm kind of running out of petals, you know. It it doesn't really last. Um, there was probably eight lots. Uh, probably five lots of eight there so yeah so I've already sewn on 40 petals and I am kind of running out which is really sad especially because I know I've got to sew round these as well let's put those there I'm just going to grab my cloth here, it's still folded up, and I'm not 100% sure whether I have to do one or two. Now this cloth that I'm using, it's almost like um, a thick gossamer, or a sort of rough canvas. Ideal for crafting, I must admit I got it in um, a remnant shop that specialises in selling remnants and um, yeah I know I can't get any more but it's just perfect for this so let's hold that up and you can see through it it's like a very thin but it's got kind of like a, um, a canvasy kind of feel to it so let's get rid of those get rid of the bits And my four leaves, four petals again. And we're going to keep that extra one. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> we'll just use the other pile. That's fine. We can get rid of that in a bit. 
So just sliding them under the foot there, placing them and then pouring round the fabric. So these ones again, I haven't cut properly, but what I'll do is just fan them out. That's fine. Uh, make sure you don't pick anything up because, you know, that would be a nuisance. All right, so I've made the flower. And that's kind of like the easy bit, really. That's the fun bit, I think. So I'm just going to trim off where I didn't cut it very well. And I get everything that I want to keep on one side and everything that I want to throw away on the other. So there we are. We have the flower and we have the quilt. And what we need to do is attach the two together. Now, as I said before, that the difficult part of this sew is going to be this fabric, this stretch fabric at the bottom. So let's fan it out. Okay, I did that badly. I'll have another go. So yeah, there we go. I'm not worried about the leaves facing the right way because they'll un unravel. But what I want is I want my circle to have no leaves underneath it. Okay, that's what I'm going for there. And I'm going to pick a position on the quilt. I'd like to see some of that green baroque. So I'm going to move it up slightly. There we go. And then I'm going to place it anywhere in the circle although I'm going to pick the bit that landed the neatest and start zigzagging around these petals. Now it... There we go, so I've got it in position now and I don't need to worry about the other petals, all I need to do is worry about the petals here and I know that there's no petals caught underneath the brown. So I'm going to change the sewing machine to back to my zigzag. I've got it on a nice wide stitch. There's nothing funny about it at all. My tension's quite loose. And then I have the job of just literally sewing round. Now it's up to you if you pick up every petal. It's up to you whether you pick up every other petal. It's up to you, really. It's quite nice to have floppy ends as well. Um, so there are lots of things to consider. So I'm going to go with every other petal. And if I see that they're clumped like that, I'm going to adjust it now. Yeah, the reason I'm going for every other petal is we know that there's over 40 individual petals. So. One of the things you have to make sure is you have to make sure that your quilt is lying flat. This is just so it doesn't buckle. Um, it would be a shame to ruin it. Um, if you're doing a quilt with multimedia, so if you're doing a quilt where you've got a painting on it, then um, whichever medium you're weakest in, do first. So if you're weaker in paint, then you can do the painting first, um, just in case you ruin it, really. Um, yeah, so here we go. It's very therapeutic, I think, and it does give such dramatic results. Of course, I'm only worrying about the next couple of petals. And if I feel that I've got a naked bit, then I'm going to spread it out. And when I do come to this green baroque here, I'm going to just kind of wiggle my petals about so that I can um, then see it. Okay, so I'm going to pause the camera and I'll be back. Hiya, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I do forget to switch the camera back on. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm getting there. I really am. I'm, yeah. 
I just got to work through really, you know. One thing I will say is these ones that have come over the edge, I've made sure that I haven't sewn right to the edge. So if I want to frame it with uh, another piece of cloth, then I can quite easily have these sort of dangling over the edge. So, And they look quite dramatic and um, quite dramatic loose. But if I want to, I can, I can, I've left it so that I can decide later. I suppose that's the only way I can say it. Now, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on doing these petals and um, then I'm going to look at it. Now, I know that sounds a, a bit kind of, you're going to look at it, are you? Yeah, okay, you do that. Um, but when I look at it, I'm going to look at it discerningly and I'm going to decide if I need a couple more lines of stitches and I'll decide whether I need to just um, circle round the round, uh, the centre, just to see if I need to do that. And it is a discerning artistic eye, you, you've got to look at it critically. And with practice, I suppose you do just go, yeah, it just needs one line of stitches there and it, that will lift it. Or it just needs a piece of red in that corner. Um, and it is, it is quite simple it, uh, and practice. But if I need to walk away because I can't work out what's wrong with it, then I'll walk away for 10 minutes or so. And um, yeah. I suppose we just have to find our own way of doing it. Uh, I do know people that find having a photograph makes it a sort of less personal, and then they can do they can do that that visual thing. So yeah, I want that a bit random. Yeah, um, you're going to need lots of thread in your machine, uh, and uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's not really a lot I can say, because, uh, you know, you just have to trust the machine as well, that if you've laid it flat, then it's not going to pucker. I suppose that's the biggest worry, that you have to um, have worries like that. And okay, so there we are. And I do need to go around that circle. And I think I'm going to need a couple of lines at the bottom. And um, you can also give it a shake and see what it hangs like because you want a little bit of floppiness, don't you? But you don't want too much. And then I'm going to, when I sew it, I'm going to sew over those stitches and I'm going to pull this out slightly, but that's fine. So other than that, I'm quite happy with it really. Um, maybe if I was doing it again, I would watch that I had the tartan on cross, but um, that bit of tartan, <laughs> there is no tartan left in my house, it's really sad. <laughs> I had a bit of a panic last night, so... Okay, so yes, easiest way to make sure it's flat is by keeping it flat when you put it in. So now I'm just going to tidy this up. You can use a pin. Don't think you can't just because I don't. Um, yeah, I do find going over stitches quite hard. changing the colour of the thread is quite hard as well. Um, completely personal, isn't it? Um, you know, try and work to your strengths. If your strengths aren't cutting out, then find a way to do it. There we go. So, and it was this petal here that was annoying me. So 
yes, how to make things a bit more three-dimensional as well. So, all right, the obvious thing is that you have big things in the foreground and small things in the background. That'd be better. <laughs> I turned it around the other way. But there's a lot to be said for having something that's jumping out at you. Um, so, you know, maybe a bird or something, just to give it a bit of depth. Um, yeah. Hand. Grass is good, and grass doesn't necessarily need to be green. Um, yeah, because you've got to think about light and shade. But if you wanted to try to do an art quilt, I can't think of anything simpler than one single flower. And then maybe when you think you've finished, leave it out. Leave, I'm going to leave it on this desk. And then when I come back in later, I'm going to go, do you know, I'm going to take my own advice and put one bird, very simple, v-neck thing, flying. Oh, probably not made out of lining, but... And um, if you are going to attach things on, like the flower, what you can do is make the flower, place the flower and not sew it on, have a little look at it and have a little thing. So, yeah. But yeah, artists' quilts. I know, it's my new favourite thing, so I'm sure you'll be seeing them again from me. And um, thank you ever so much for watching. It's been a pleasure to do. And um, yeah, like, share and subscribe. All right, thank you ever so much.